Hi, Foster. Greetings. <laughs> I'm Laura. I'm Joe. Welcome to the Soul Fox Farm. This is the farm where we play on cross stitch. <laughs> One stitch at a time. The second part. <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel like we just did this. And oh my god. My brain is. My brain is toast. So we are here to talk about plannering. And I'm here to learn about plannering. She's here to talk about plannering. I have never in my life done more than two cross stitch patterns at a time. Okay, my now retire one, and that doesn't count because I don't look at it for two years. Right. But I have never bothered having more than two. Well, let's start all the things. I decided to jump on the bandwagon. And now, all of a sudden, I got to plan all this stuff out, and I have no idea what I'm doing. And Happy Planner is um, not very guy friendly. Happy Planner is very good. So I had to go my own little way, but I have never honestly tried to plan much of anything with cross stitch. So I'm here to learn as much as you are. So we're going to talk about plannering and stitchy plannering and. What Joe is doing, which is technically not plannering, it's more like stitchy journaling. There are two, so there are kind of two different approaches you can do to this. You can do stitchy plannering, which is what I do, and I do it big. Or you can do stitchy journaling. I like big plans that I cannot lie. Um, it, you're kind of journaling in your planner, but it breaks it down and makes it vastly more specific. Um, some people do turn their planners into journals or memory books. I don't do that. You know, I keep counts year to year because I do, because I started counting stitches for challenges. So I might as well keep track of it and see how much I've done. Right. Um, so, okay. <sighs> Why don't we start with you? I have a pile. I have a book. I have a book. Which I already showed in the other video. So this is, we got this off of Amazon. They have several different sizes. Or they and have several covers. different style co co cover styles. Um, because I actually have one that's like this, but instead of the Zelda thing on it, it's got a compass on it. And it comes with blank pages, so I went and got the lined ones. Yes. I use the blank pages. It makes my life easy. I utilize the blank pages. <clears throat> it is a nice little notebook. Um, I need my lines. My little piece of leather that straps it around the middle actually came off because I carried it around in my purse and it yanked it off one day. It's okay. I'll be fine. It's got an anchor and a compass on it still, and that's what I'm about. All I have on here so far okay. is the days of the month, the, the different months, and what I plan on doing in it. So he's got, like, a page that he's just got plans on. Now, it's table of contents. One way you can do a stitchy journal is on each page, so each blank page, write down what the whip is, <laughs> and if you need to plan out stuff for starting the whip, you know, what fabric you're getting for it, um, what flosses you may need for it. Or if you have all of that together and planned out and you don't want to put that in here, you know, yes. No, finish what you're doing. I'm going to say something you're done. Okay. Mm. Um, progress. No progress. Now, your progress tracking is how you want to track your progress. I count stitches. He does not. So what... I'm going to suggest that he does is have his whip name up here. You know, if we need anything else for it, we can do that here or we can do it on a separate page. Um, but we'll have our whip name up here and then the day if we will write, he can write in the day and then how much time he put into it. So three hours, four hours. I would need five pages for squirrels. The nice thing about <clears throat> having a, um, planner having a book where you can take out where you can add and remove the pages is squirrels of sumatra is going to take up probably more than one page <laughs> but like sorry this lizzie kate probably won't that probably there this is actually what inspired me 
to actually have my floating patterns that I came up with because this is not going to take me a month. If this takes me a month, a really good video game came out. That's true. But this is a very basic, um, I want to say basic bare bones minimum. You know, if you're like, I'm not sure about, mm. you know, journaling, planner, plannering, my stitching. This is a great way to start <clears throat> because you'll just use one page for each project. Write down the date you worked on it and write down how much you worked on it. However you track that, whether it be hours or stitch counts or whatever. If you want to use a binder and old note paper you have lying around from college or high school or that your kid never used, do it. Go for it. Or raid the dollar store. You can get that stuff there. You can get that stuff at the dollar store. But, so, I mean, it is very basic, but it is also very effective. There is one other use I plan on using this for. What's that? Uh, Like for mayhem. My man, mania. Blech, I will mess mania. that up until the world comes in. May I'm no, doing... it's mayhem. Oh, March mayhem. Okay. That's <laughs> mayhem. All right. Well, we're doing, I'm doing four projects, which to y'all might not sound like a lot. But for me, I have never started four projects in one month in my life. But I, because it's all in one month, I want to make sure I get everything purchased ahead of time. So for a lot of the projects, I'm going to write down the flosses and then go and kit out raiding my wife's stash, or your own stash if you're not married. I help her need stash all the time. Yes. And then that way I have a list of what I have and what I don't. And a lot of patterns will actually tell you, well, if you're following the same count and thread count as we are, they'll tell you how many skeins of each color to use. So you can actually know, and then you can just go, okay, well... I don't, because of all the crap going on, or because I live 500 miles from the closest shopping center, I'm just going to get everything I need, all the floss I need for my entire year in one shipping purchase. And some people do that. Some people, because they live very far from a, a, a needle workshop, do bulk purchasing. And so... You know, and everybody likes to say, well, pattern can't travel alone, floss can't travel alone. And, you know, well, they can. Shipping effectiveness, you know, cost for shipping, buying multiple things at a time is, is advantageous. Even if you're <sighs> like <sighs> us, we live relatively close to two Joanne's. We live 15, 20 minutes from one. You know, depending on traffic. And then where I stitch on Mondays is right across the street from a Joann's. Well, I needed one floss yesterday or last week. So I walked in there and I got a DMC because I was, I needed it because I was not going to wait Yeah. to get the Sullivan's. So I just bought the one DMC. And then I'm walking around going, well, do I need anything else? Because once again, a floss and I don't have any cash on me, so I'm not putting like 60 cents on my credit card. I ended up buying a ball of yarn, but... Um, the other thing is, is that if you're buying silks... Right. I don't think there is a store that... Are there any stores that actually just sell like... So you have to order them. I mean, well, online. A, a physical LNS does, but... Also, there's the fact that, say, you're do say you like to do a bunch of patterns that have silks. Well, I'll, as I was talking to her, she could do it with her part. If you're planning your stuff out, you realize you have so many silks between five patterns that you actually get a skein or a hank instead of a couple skeins because you have that much you need. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cheaper? Um, well, it depends. Some silks, they don't sell them in big, big quantities. Now, you know, like, and, and a lot of stitchers will know this, um, <sighs> Gentle Arts. And Weeks Dye Works, they sell five yard skeins of their overdites and ten yard skeins of their overdites. If you happen to be like needing multiples of one color for several different projects, it might be more effective to buy the ten yard skein. So, and you know, if you're looking at something where you want to track your start date, your end date, you know, your start date, your work days. Your end days, you know, what floss, what what fabric you use and all that. Having a note, doing it on notebook paper 
works out well. And you can put notebook paper in a happy planner. And also, if you Ooh. want to write something that the lines would get in the way, it came with blank pages. Yes, it came with blank pages. So, so you can just put those in there. You can order blank pages for this. You can order dotted pages for this. Or you can order the line pages for this. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's nice, and it's versatile, which is what I like about it. I have two books that are like this that get kind of used as, you know, scrap notes because I have the blank pages. Um, I know I did my grading on it for Daily 30 last night on that so that I could, you know, just so that I could track it and figure out, you know, and I have questions about that because this is my first grading assignment. So I, you know, could mark notes. I have questions. So that's really the basic. I'm not sure if I want to do this or how I want to do this or even if it matters to me that I track my stitches. And one other piece of advice. Pencil and eraser. Don't use a pen. Especially if you're like me and you've never done it before. You don't want to know how much stuff I erased. Because I know me and I know that writing in pen when I first start is a bad idea. And guess what? In a nice, protected thing like this, pencil's fine. Exactly. Okay. So now we're going to get into my insanity. Should I run away and hide? No. You can run away and hide. Um, what oh, do you want me here for you? you? See here. This is my happy planner. Uh, uh. One of my happy planners. Mm. Um, this is the classic size. You can get your planner in three sizes. class, um, Big, classic, and mini. I planner in the classic size. Your planner is going to come with Metal, with plastic rings, I don't have them down here. Um, I got metal expander discs because I cram a lot of stuff into mine. And because the plastic ones don't handle dropping very well. And because... <laughs> exactly. Um, I've had these metal rings for a bit of time. Because when <sighs> I first started getting into the plannering in 2019... 2020? 2019? 19. 2019? I was still working, and one of the little loveys in my daycare got a hold of something that this happened to be sitting on, pulled it down, and broke two of my rings. So I just got metal rings so that I can beat it up. Your basic planner is going to come with tabs for all of the month, <sighs> and... Hello, Mr. Police Officer. I bet he was sitting there looking at us. Like, what the fuck are they doing? She's holding up a book, talking to... Anyways. And um, sheets that have the days. So Monday through Sunday is this format, and that's Happy Planner's format. It's got the dates up here. And it's going to be blocked off, lined off. It just depends on the planner that you buy. Or the inserts you buy. Or the planner inserts that you buy. Um, you can buy just the covers, just covers, just rings, and then inserts, like, that'll have undated, that you can buy undated inserts. I think you can buy dated inserts, too, um, for the year. The undated ones come in six months. I got this cover set and a set for 2022 way back in the fall. It was like 75% off because it was a June, because it was a July to June planner. So the first six months of my year, I have, you know, my happy planner stuff. Now, you can buy a refill kit and fill in from there. You can, and happy planner sells them. Happy planner sells all kinds of stuff you can buy. You can go on Etsy and find all kind of stuff you can buy. You can go on Pinterest and find free stuff. That's what I did. <clears throat> so, um, and I have to refill my personal planner, which is the same size as this. My personal planner is not a happy planner. It's actually, um, I don't know where it's at. <clears throat> Here it is. It's simplicity. The months are 
divided. So all I have to do is refill my calendar and my days on this with my happy planner. The month is split over two pages and one of them is the back of the divider tab. But I have the divider tabs from this year's planner and I'm just going to do what they call Franken planning and cut off the spine, cut off the tab, slap it on there. Once I get past the month that I'm, I have an accurate calendar for. And then I'm just going to insert my own um, overview calendar, which is, you know, a one page, all the days of the month calendar. I downloaded this for free from Etsy. I will put, I will put a link <clears throat> to the happy planner um, webpage on, in the description of this video. Um, I will put the links to all of my pages that I've printed out on the video. I'll try to put links for everything on the video. I may not find them. You can also buy Happy Planner products in Joann's if you want to go in and see a physical stuff. I think Michael sells them too. Um, and there are other types of planner planners that are interchangeable. Like this Simplicity Planner was not a Happy Planner. We found it, I, somebody found, Beth Ann found it on Amazon and showed it to me and I'm like, uh, oh my God. Uh, 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 a binder, just a regular, a binder. Excuse me. You can use a regular binder. If you already have a three punch hole thing and you don't got money, just print this stuff on stuff out, put it in a three ring binder. You get some, get those regular from the store dividers, put the names of the months in it and you're good. You don't my have to go crazy. My very planner was a binder. And I printed everything out and I that thing shredded. You can even find divider pages. A lot of and there are tons of places on Etsy that sell a printable planner which gives you the month, the days of the week, dividers and all of that. You can find it for free on Pinterest. You do have to look a little bit for it on Pinterest for free. But Pinterest also will link you to places on Etsy and other places on the web where you can buy it. Most of the stuff that you have to, per most of the stuff, if you're purchasing an individual page or page bundle, it's not that expensive. <sighs> it's really not. When you do purchase a whole printable planner, it can get a little bit pricey depending on how elaborate it is. But I just printed and out. And what mascots are on it? Also true. <laughs> um, I just printed out, so I planted out, you know, Blank calendar pages. I'll put the months on, write the dates in. Boom. Oh, uh, one thing we found out. If you are downloading the PDFs, save them to your hard drive and open them with Adobe. Yes. Because it that. will actually allow you to print that in a much more consistent way that just makes it easier. So you do have to size down. Obviously, this this downloads as a full sheet. I sized it down to fit my classic planner. I think I printed this at 85 or 90 percent. I can't remember. This one 85. Was, some of them you print at, printing them out at 85 work. Some of them you have to print them out a little bit bigger. Some of them you have to print out a little bit smaller. You just kind of gotta play with your printer. Um, to figure out what you're going to need. And yes, an Adobe PDF will print out in the center of the full size page. So you can do front to back, front and back, which I'll show you an example of in a second. But so then I've just printed out my weeks. Now I have split weeks. So. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is on one page. Thursday, fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is on another. How do we... So you'll see these are single-sided because obviously when you start the month... So like the first week of the month, it'll be a single-sided with one that is 
double-sided. I printed out some that are double-sided. Um, you don't have to do it that way. I just was trying to save paper. And honestly, I could have been even more crazy about it and printed the first, you know, part of the week on the back of the calendar sheet. But I wasn't quite that overachieverish. It also um, depends on your printer. It depends on your printer. It depends on your personal preference. I was trying to A, save <clears throat> paper, B, save um, space in my note, in my binder. I have the big um, happy planner punch. So if you do a disc planner, obviously hole punch doesn't work for making your things. This is super easy. I have the big one so I can punch holes in papers for the big planner, the classic planner, and the mini planner. I have a big planner size that's notes. So And it shows you how to align it. It's not going to go in right now. It's not going to go in because I want it to. And it punches out your holes. So it fits in your disc. Now, this is not regular printer paper. Um, Beth Ann linked me some really nice... This is actually a little bit heavier than Happy Planner paper. I'll link that below. But that's basically how you do the 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 the, the. days of the month. The days, and yes, there's more of these than the back-to-back -back ones because I was fiddling with making this work. I have some printing to do. All right, you can do lots of things to organize your stitching. What I do is a very basic on the days of the week. I write down on the top what I'm stitching on and what my stitch count is. I do my stitch count generally on my calculator. I was doing it where I would write down each time I counted, I would write it down here, but then I would have to bust out the calculator to total it. So I'm like, this is dumb. So I either just use a little piece of scrap paper to kind of keep my counts down or I'll just have a running total going on my calculator, you know, and then there's lines, you know, you have plenty of space. These lines down here for me will get used for, um, things for the pirate ship, my pirate ship game, because I'm the captain. So I have to track feeding people and watering people and where we're going and what we're doing and <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I literally just pictured you sitting there with a watering can, pouring it on on sailors, cleaning them up. You're dirty. You need watered. I have little envelopes that I bought that are Happy Planner envelopes. I have them in various sizes. I have them in a couple sizes in my planner in various places. This is another example. To keep little scraps of paper that I need to organize. Um, or whatever. I have my planner set up so that the year is in the front. Obviously, we're right at the end of the year. So. I have what's called a dashboard. They're also you called the bookmarks. You mean the months, not the year? What? You said the year on the front. Did you mean the months? I have the months, I have January to December, the months for the year, in the front of my planner. Okay. Um, obviously divided by their cap. Then I have this dashboard, it's called a dashboard, also could be called a bookmark, that I stick in the middle of the week that we're currently on. For sake of, I can flip right to it because it's got a cap. <laughs> Easy enough. Behind my monthly planner thing. And then I have note sheets. These are happy planner note sheets. You can print out notebook paper from the internet for free and punch it. 
but I have a couple inserts just to keep notes on. This happens to be my trim the tree notes so that I remember what I put on my tree. All right, so when we get done with the months, I have another bookmark dashboard divider. Again, with the tab to make it easy. Then I have my chart with all my projects on it. I'm gonna do my chart a little bit different this year, or in 2022. I found a, um, online I found a free thing. It is lined check boxes and there's four boxes. So I can put four projects on a page. So project title will go here. Um, there's enough that I can put each month, my stitch totals for that project on here on the month. For me, it's not necessarily important to remember what fabric I stitched a project on once I'm done stitching it or what flosses I used once I'm done stitching it. Floss use particularly because a lot of times I'm switching out for Victorian mottos that are not available because they were part of the monthly club. So I don't necessarily, I don't find myself wanting or needing to keep that, but I do like to have my stitch totals. So there's enough lines that I can put, I'll put where I start, like how many stitches it mm. is in it prior to the beginning, prior to January, and then January through December stitch totals on here. Um, a little bit more effective than my chart, to be fair. More room anyway. And more room, and more room. I found that um, my chart, I was running out of room and I got to like, October and was like, I don't have any more spaces to add new starts. I have new, I was like, I'm not going to start anything because I don't want to print out anything. I still started stuff. So, so there's that. And then I have behind that, I have a little hashtag thing that we're doing throughout the year, which I didn't talk about in the plans video. Oh, well, um, you know what each day hashtag is going to be and my single focus projects for next year. Um, my plan is to stitch on these on Sundays. I went as far as taking each one of those little hashtags, writing it out with what project fits into it to keep track. And then let's see, what else do I have in here? I have my whip go board. So now this is where you get some because a lot of people have WIPGO boards that they make this way. Y'all. This is my WIPGO board for 2022. I just wrote it down on a piece of notes paper. But if you want to do it this way, what you can do is print out your WIPGO board, scale down, take a piece of notes paper, and attach it. Now, some people use glue sticks. I use what is called tear and tape. Um, it is like double-sided tape, but it is vastly less expensive and it's, I think, easier to use because it comes on a roll like this. So this side is sticky, this side isn't so you, and it just, and it literally tears off. That's why it's called tear and tape. I think it's easier to use than double-sided tape. You know, you can print this out, cut this down, and punch holes in it into your planner, or you can do this. I did this last year because this was easier. You know, I've got my letters of the month, Sal, in here. That wasn't visible. I've got my letters of the month, Sal, in here. I think for my letters of the month, Sal, my plan for 2022 letters of the month. Um, when I was doing Myth and Magic, I had a chart in here that had all of the items that we would stitch for um, and their stitch values and how many we had of them and what spells, what I needed of the, you know, and what spells we had and what items needed to go into those spells. I had it down. And I have lots of things tabbed out with dashboards or bookmarks because ease of flipping through. You don't have to do that. You can if you want. 
Um, I have a cheat sheet in here for One Nation that tells me the counts of each letter to make counting One Nation easier. Something like this. You don't think of, but then you're like, wait, if I'm counting my stitches, that makes it so much easier. And I have notes about conversions. This one's for uh, Raven Queen. <laughs> and then I've got these cute little pocketed folders that I stick little, like this is, um, I think that's my preliminary mayhem. Yeah. I've got little pocketed folders that kind of got mayhem in there and the list of whips and different things. Um, I was keeping track of the ship a little bit differently, but then I started doing it on the actual day of what I needed to feed us, what I needed for, for us for water and how far we were with like sailing or fighting. Um, you can also pick, cause you get, cause you can buy these little sticker, sticker sheets, um, little folders, little envelopes are great to stick in there. And then I have a bunch of notepad type paper, um, just for jotting notes down. So I have a pretty thick planner. I try to do it pretty simplistically and basically, but I've already spent probably 20 minutes explaining this all to you. Um, I also, you know, print out little charts and things. This is for crochet stuff. I'm going to stick those on pieces of notes paper with my handy dandy double sided tape, just for quick reference. Um, I've already showed you the punch for when it comes to adding things into there. The other thing that's really helpful, especially if you are printing out a bunch of stuff for your planner. Like I'm completely printing out <sighs> my personal planner. All of the stuff in my personal planner is completely printed out from myself. I'm not buying a refill kit for it. Half of this year, I'm printing it out myself because I'm not buying a refill kit. You don't have to buy a refill kit. You can print it out yourself. I showed you how you can print it out yourself. But the thing that makes it easier is one of these, which this is a paper cutter. Mine is from Stamp It Up. Stamp It Up doesn't sell theirs anymore. Fiskar sells one. I will link the Fiskar one because that's a pretty good one. Um, mine is from Stamp It Up. Mine has, so it's got, so it, this, this trench here, I'm missing the rubber piece that goes in the trench that helps guide it. Um, it's somewhere on the floor of my craft room, but this is where your um, cutting blade cuts on. This is actually a scoring blade. This one's the cutting blade. It's stamp it up card making. Um, and then some of them have this little piece that comes out. When it comes to bulk cutting, my pro tip is line it up, you know, get your piece measured how you want it. As you're making the cut, what I did was I took a piece of masking tape and where the end of the paper lined up when I was cutting it, I put a piece of masking tape. So like I had a couple pieces up here and I labeled it. So the top, this is where the top hits it, the bottom, this is where the bottom hits it, this is where this side is. It makes it easier than sitting there and measuring it every single time. Because you can't, obviously, most of these you can only do three or four sheets at a time. And my other recommendation is when you're cutting, pull the waste paper away first to make sure you've cut through all your layers. So I will include links to Happy Planner for all the Happy Planner gear. I will find a Fiskars a paper cutter. Um, you can buy a guillotine cutter. Would a rotary and a mat work? A rotary cutter and a cutting mat would work. Um, I will find the Fiskar paper cutter like this and link that because that's what I use. I will link all of my printouts and I will try to make in my paper that I'm using um, and I will try to make notes of all of my printouts of what I printed, what percentage I printed it out on to get it to fit in the plastic planner. 
You may have to play with it a little bit if you do it to make it fit for you. That's how I plan her. I'm complicated, y'all. May I make one suggestion? Yes, dear. If you're using fancy paper and you want to do it double-sided, please test it with regular mm. paper. Yes, that's what I did. I test printed everything on regular computer paper. So I got to the point where this is the size I need. This fits back and forth right. And then I went through and did on my fancy paper. Um, I don't have everything I need printed out. I have to finish that. But I have enough to start the year. Every printer is different. Yes. And every printer is different. And there are some printers that will allow you to... Tell it what size paper you're printing on. And even if you're not actually printing on that size paper, it will scale it down to print on that. Um, I have a guide from a website from several years ago that tells you what size to print out for the different happy planner sizes. I can link that too. I'm going to forget to link everything I need to link. Maybe she writes down your planner. <laughs> I'm going to get it here. I need lunch. It's one o'clock and I haven't had lunch yet. So Well, we started at noon. I think we started sausage. before noon. We did start before noon. We've talked an awful lot. I've talked an awful lot today. <laughs> so that's how we plan her. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um and I can uh answer them and then probably at some point make a video addressing if I get a bunch of questions, I'll make a video addressing those questions and redo the planner video and tack those questions on there. So, all right. That's it. I'm done talking my face off. What do we want the people to do? Get some glue so I can reattach your face. <laughs> Please like, comment, subscribe, bell notification, thingy me Bobby. The whole YouTube thing. All right. We will see you. And if you really want, you can message below. If you really want to get a Zelda planner, I'll link it below if I find it. I'll link the, the Zelda notebook. And the paper. And the paper. Um, because I think... Yeah, and then I'll link... Yeah, I'll make this all the notebook and the paper, and you can go from there finding different cover options, because they do have different cover options in that size and style. That's included in the linking. That came in more than one that came in more than one color. Yes. Even. Amazon has some options, y'all. They do. Alright. We will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.